reports. Mayor? Um, I would just like to, I know it's late, it's been a while, but um, I have some things that um, I'd like to say concerning this issue. Uh, Matthew, would you put it in writing that he won't hurt our sales tax? <laughs> I didn't think so. Okay, just the option. Um, just to kind of go to the other side of some of the things that we've worked in concert with the county through the years, and we do have a great working relationship, and I appreciate that. But uh, several years ago, we partnered 50 50 in the building of the animal shelter when it is the county's responsibility to provide an animal shelter for Jackson County. And so they split it 50 50 with us. We have three full time people down there, and the county provides one. And in the last five years, the animal shelter has taken in approximately 6,500 uh, dogs, with 69% of those being from Jackson County, out in the county. Um, we, the last few years, we've saved the uh, county over $100,000 in landfill tipping fees from rates when we could have gone up on it, but we didn't. Uh, we remain the same. Those numbers have changed since 2010. Uh, whenever the county builds uh, on county property in the city of Lemons, we don't charge them any building permits. Uh, this would con concern the hospital and the expansion of the nursing home, anything at the county park, county bus garage, etc. And then our fire department works closely with the volunteer fire department and just recently donated some equipment to those departments. Um, I believe uh, Mr. Hodges and the commission when they say they're experiencing financial difficulties. And I know this commission is trying to correct mistakes which was not of their own making and I commend them for that. I understand they're trying to find ways to increase the revenue. Um, there are different ways you can do that as Matthew's touched on the uh, the property tax, which to me is probably um, more fair way, but that's just my opinion. I, I, I wish that the commission, when they started this, would have met with the municipalities to see what our ideas might have been to help you uh, work through your problems because when you added one cent sales tax to the 13 municipalities in the county, um, it's going to affect us. And it's going to affect us, I think, in a negative way. Um, it's detrimental to the municipalities. The three largest uh, cities in the county are Scottsboro, Bridgeport, and Stevenson, and we all have a 9% sales tax. There are eight total cities in the county that have 9% sales tax. This is done in Hollywood business section in Woodville. You may think that's not a lot of money, but when you add dollar general in grocery stores and pharmacies and over the counter products and pharmacy sale, I realize that the medicine is not taxed, and that could add up to a large amount of money. But passing this tax will move the cities, all the cities to 10%. It takes us to a whole different level. All of a sudden we've got double digit sales tax. Um, I believe that it will hurt our sales tax collections on the front end. If we suffer lower tax collections, we have to adjust our spending just like they're trying to do. Uh, in 2008 and 9, our sales tax dropped 6%, but we will manage to be able to get through that by tightening our belts. Our TBA little tax money has decreased $250,000 in the last three or four years. We felt that pain also. But we know how to manage our money in difficult times, and, and if, this pass tax, if this tax passes and it hurts our revenue, then we'll manage to get through it again. But there are 460 municipalities in Alabama, and only 82 I think you said 81, but somewhere in that number, or 17% of the cities in Alabama have a 10% sales tax. And none of those cities are within 75 miles of Scottsboro. The nearest to our area is it's in Calhoun County, where Piedmont, Jacksonville, Oxford, and Aniston are all at 10%. And I printed this map out today. If you see everything in blue, that is 10% sales tax in these counties. It may just be one city. Or maybe several. Birmingham has like 21 cities in Jefferson County uh, that are at 10% sales tax. So you can see that nowhere in North Alabama, other than over in Marion County, is there a 10% sales tax. So people will have a choice of where they can spend their money. The folks on the upper end of the mountain, they could go to Rangeville at 8% or 9%. They could go to Fort Payne where it's 8%. Uh, and you're right, Fort Payne's thinking about going to 9%, but Fort Payne's already getting 3% on their sales tax, so they will go to 4% uh, of, the, of the 9% that is collected in Fort Payne. The folks in um, Gunnersville and Marshall Counties, they're all nine Huntsville, Gurley, everyone around us. So the people will have a choice of where they want to go, especially those in the periphery. 
Woodville can go to Gurley and pay 9%. The folks on the Sand Mountains, as I said earlier, can go elsewhere. The North End can go to Tennessee. But there will be leakage to these areas that will cost us, the municipalities, revenue that we're now getting. And I feel like that in Scottsboro, which is the one that I'm concerned about and responsible for, is taking the risk of losing money, the most money, while the county is collecting 3.3 million in new taxes. But I believe that number is probably low. Based on last year's sales tax receipts from Scottsboro, Bridgeport, and Stevenson, one more cent to, the, to our sales tax would earn $3.6 million. And that's not adding in the other eight municipalities that are also at 9%. That number could push close to $4 million a year. Um, the commission, I admire them or commend them for saying where the money's going to go. Uh, they say they would go to the volunteer fire departments, the school resource officers, and economic development. That's $900,000, $300,000 a piece, one and a half million to the public works, and $900,000 to the general fund. The economic development fund would grow to $3 million in 10 years. My question is on how far will that money grow? How long will you grow it? Until you get $5 million, $6 million? I don't know that answer. But I have the confidence in this commission to do the right thing when it comes to the spending of this new tax. But I'm concerned about future commissions and how they may spend it. You know, my concern is that you know, Matthew and Mr. Hodgins gave all these uh, programs that they give a portion of money to that supports in Scottsboro. Uh, the library being one of them and the Boys and Girls Club. But that is money that has probably been given for a very long time. But I, I'm concerned about where the other money will go that that we will not see. Um, my fire, fire department needs more funding. I can use more resource officers and certainly I need more paving. But adding one cent to the sales tax in Scottsboro based on last year's numbers would create $2.8 million here in the city of Scottsboro. That's what will be raised by this one cent sales tax. Or 85% or of the money that is estimated would be raised right here. And I realize that it's not all Scottsboro residents who pay this tax. It's folks from the county, the tourists, and those who pass through. This is true of any sales tax that's collected in Stevenson or Bridgeport or Dutton or Woodville. So 85% raised in the city limits of Scottsboro, but we do not have anything directly stated that it would directly benefit Scottsboro. I'm, I'm not saying that give Scottsboro 85% of the money because it will be raised here. But what I am saying is that the population of Scottsboro is 28% of Jackson County. And we are the economic engine of the county. So I would like to see, from my standpoint, that 28% of the new money that is generated will be given to Scottsboro. 28% of $3.3 million is $924,000. If that's allocated to us, we can pay the roads. We can have additional resource officers and we can equip our fire, firefighters and it still leaves the county with $2.3 million. Now let's just say you wanted to proportionally give to the municipalities. Bridgeport is 5%, so that, they would get $165,000. Stevenson is 3% of the population, $99,000. The other 10 municipalities would be 1% each. So it would be $33,000 times 10 equals $330,000. This would allow the municipalities to supplement their own fire departments as they see fit and still leave the county with one point, almost $1.8 million in new county money, which is over 400% more than your shortfall. So the question is, is it worth risking hurting your municipalities to raise $3.3 I don't know. But another option is that Mr. Hodges has stated that the sales tax is a growth tax, and he's exactly correct. Our sales tax in Scottsboro has grown 3 to 4% pretty steadily over the last five years. So why not just add a one half cent sales tax, collect $1.6 million a year, and then let the tax grow at 3 to 4% a year? So these are just my ideas of where the tax could be implemented in a more fair and reasonable way. You know, increase the half a cent and let it grow or give all municipalities their proportional share based on population. And those cities that I contacted that went to 10%, they did it on their own. They were not, it was not part of the county doing that. So they didn't see any sales tax deduction because they were the ones who implemented the increase, not the county. And the 
fourth option is you can do nothing and leave it like it is and handcuff the municipalities. But I took an oath to do what is best for the city of Scottsboro and citizens. And seeing us stand to lose sales tax revenue when the rate goes to 10, and while the county commission puts three point three million dollars in the bank is not in that, my bet in our best interest. I'm just asking you to share. We ask our local people to shop local all the time, and now we're saying shop local when pay the highest sales tax in North Alabama. Again, it's my job to express my concerns, and you've heard them here tonight. You stated that you want to move forward, but we ask that you take the rest of us with you. But the good thing is, it's not up to me, Mr. Hodges. It's up to everyone in this county to go and vote their convictions, and I encourage you to do that. Thank you. Mr. Wasser. Uh Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. I know that, that any time we talk about any tax issues, it's a it's a uh, a hot hot topic. But uh, I, I too have some concerns, but. I do realize that there's a need for increased revenue, and we all have a need for increased revenue. Um, I, I think as a city, we've been focused on trying to build our uh, commercial and retail presence, and you know, of course, a 10% sales tax does concern me. Um, but again, I, I realize that there is a, a dire, a dire need uh, there. Um, the JCS contract we've terminated. You know, uh, I see Judge Big back there. We've got 30 days to figure out how to handle our our financial and administrative uh, task, and I know I know he'll do a, a good job of, of that. Uh, I've had some questions for for Mr. Kenimer about about that process and things. And I, I hope to see your plan soon on how to administer that. Uh, that's about all I've got tonight. I, I appreciate everybody being. Mr. Smith. Uh, to change the subject, I would like to call attention to the passing of Ms. Owen, uh, owner of Unplanned Values, along with her husband, Doyle, uh, from this first day of operation. No words can express the impact of, on this city made by Mr. and Ms. Owen when they opened Unplanned Values not only to the city of Scottsboro, to the state of Alabama, this whole United States and in many foreign countries. She was a wonderful person, a skilled businesswoman, and a devoted wife, and a great citizen to the city of Scottsboro. And she will be dearly missed. Thank you. Mr. Miller? I was going to talk about the uh, two teams that were in the state championships this uh, busy thing last weekend, but I think I'll let Gary finish that off. Mr. Stewart, do you have anything else? No, that's it. I'm sorry. Well, I guess the 700 and 900 is being the boys um, they both qualify for the World Series. Again, Saturday, play against Saturday. They have to be there Friday night for the opening ceremony. But um, we appreciate all the support the city and the county and everyone in this area to give those kids, they really worked hard to get there, and uh, they're looking forward to it. They're very excited about it. Um, I know they are in my house, but I appreciate it, and uh, the city appreciates all the support that you do. That's all I have. Thank you. I just want to kind of reiterate on that, on the state championship, they work really hard down there on the Veterans Field, and uh, Yvonne and uh, their staff, they did an outstanding job uh, at this university. They are uh, proud of the boys that are going to go to South Haven and uh, looking forward to that trip over there. But, uh, I know there's a lot on the plate with the county commission. Um, there's a lot of uh, thought process behind the one cent sales tax. Um, I know my first knee jerk reaction was absolutely not. But after sitting down and talking to, to Matthew and uh, seeing what the impact could be on down the road, 15, 20 years down the road. Um, there's just a lot of questions to, that I think the citizens of Scottsboro need to ask and get answers to. So, uh, and I encourage the citizens to, to call Matthew or the commission to get their side of where they stand, where their money will be spent as well. So, um, <coughs> I just want to 
certainly impact a lot of people, but um, I think it just needs to be an educated decision made. And people need to get out and vote, just like what Milton said. So, let the people speak. So, what they say. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? No. Second. Second. Tom Perry, say aye. 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 Aye.